that healthcare systems face a number of what I call improvement challenges. Yeah. Uh, and the, this is the, these, these improvement challenges are common, I think, to most developed healthcare systems. They have a particular, um, particular dimensions to them in different jurisdictions and at different times. But the four challenges are how to improve population and personal health, how to improve quality of care and services, how to improve um, uh, the efficiency and productivity of services, and uh, finally, how to improve the integration of services. Um, and I see the same things here in New Zealand around, similar things in New Zealand around that improvement agenda as I did in Scotland. But the circumstances that a particular jurisdiction will be in at a particular time, um, well, yeah, there, there, there are the various on that, but things like district annual plans and what they're saying about um, what they're actually saying about the development of primary care, what they're, what they're saying specifically about what they're going to do, uh, achieve and deliver from the better, sooner, more convenient business cases. So, so you're making it clear to DHBs that you've got an expectation that they will be providing yes. some leadership and yes. this has got to be in Yes, the, in that, the that's right. But in, in, what we're trying to do is work with them. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, it's, it's not some kind of great command from on yeah. high. It's saying, look, you know, this is really important stuff um, and uh, we want to help you achieve uh, results in this area. How have you found moving <coughs> from uh, the NHS where the workforce was being cut back to a real focus on retention in the workforce in New Zealand? Um, well, <laughs> one has to be careful about comparing one place with another place. My, my intention coming here is to be judged on what I achieve for the people of New Zealand. That's what I'm here for. When I was in Scotland, I obviously wanted to be judged on what I was to achieve in that specific setting. If at the end of my time in New Zealand, people say, as the leaders of the nursing uh, unions in Scotland said, that I'd left the health services in better shape than when I arrived, I think I'd be quite happy with that verdict on what I'm talking about. Unscheduled care out of hours. I think is a very good example of why clinical integration is really important. I mean, there's been quite a lot of coverage in the newspapers in recent times about um, numbers of people attending emergency departments. Um, well, the question you've got to ask yourself is, is why do people go to the emergency department? And the answer is that it's, given the, given the choices which they may face, it may be a very rational, appropriate thing for them to do. The question that we need to think about is what, what more we can do to enable people to make choices so that they end up receiving care in the, in the place appropriate to their needs. And what I'm thinking about here are things like um, uh, Healthline or equivalents in different places, um, the ambulance service, and there's been quite a lot of stuff as far as I can see on uh, quite a lot of work on sort of trying to join those two things together so that they can operate and uh, between each other according to the needs of people. Uh, similarly, I think the other components of the kind of unscheduled care system, there's, there's a case for looking at whether we can achieve greater integration between those, those, those services, exchange of information about uh, people who are presenting, so that people do go to places which are best placed to meet their particular needs at a particular time. We need, we need DHBs to um, because they sit in the centre of a lot of this. DHBs to, to think through how they want to structure and organise their unscheduled care services. Um, and in the light of that, clearly there's a role for um, informing people about when it's appropriate to contact this service or when it's appropriate to contact some other service. So I think uh, that's, that's really what I'm trying to convey. I ought to say uh, and, uh, that you know, I came here in January the, the 5th and then we had the earthquake mm. uh, in February. That was um, something which gave me an insight to some of the strengths in the New Zealand healthcare system. Mm. Um, I think I said at that long-term conditions uh, conference that uh, I think the, uh, the events, tragic events of, of February also revealed, you know, that uh, in New Zealand, the 
sector, the ministry, the clinical staff work really very well together and with other government agencies to respond to, uh, to the earthquake. Um, and I thought it was really very impressive and uh, I've never has, you know, saw every opportunity to congratulate uh, people who uh, were involved in that. And of course the recent events, again, you know, back in, back in the, the, the kind of uh, similar sorts of things and we, we activated all our arrangements again and um, fortunately we've not had the sort of injuries and so on, but the kind of uh, mental health consequences of all of this is something which we continue to keep very much under close review, but gave me an insight to, to see what I think are real strengths in the New Zealand healthcare system, that people pull together, supported one another.